Hello gentlemen, welcome to your video on chapter 1, section 1, entitled Elements and Compounds. Now in our investigation on section 1, we talked about matter and defining what it is. Matter is a solid, liquid, or gas that has mass and occupies space. When something occupies space, we say it has volume. Now matter can be separated into two major categories. One, pure substances, and the other, mixtures. Mixtures can be separated into two distinct categories. One category is homogeneous mixtures, and the other is a heterogeneous mixture. We're going to talk more about these two types of mixtures in a later section. But today we will talk about and focus on pure substances. Now, pure substances, which is a section of matter or a category of matter, can be broken down into two categories as well, elements and compounds. Elements are materials that cannot be broken down into simpler parts or simpler materials. Elements are identified by elemental symbols. Elemental symbols come in two ways, or three ways, but usually just two major ways. They come in single capitalized letters, like the C here, or they come in the form of a capitalized letter followed by a lowercase letter. For example, ZN stands for zinc, C stands for carbon, O stands for oxygen, H stands for Hydrogen, Cl, the lowercase l here, stands for chlorine. These are elements. The other category of matter, or sorry, of pure substances, are compounds. Compounds are substances that contain two or more different elements that are bonded together in definite proportions. Now, compounds are identified by a chemical formula. This is when you have two or more elemental symbols together. For example, I have H and O here together in what we know as a chemical formula. That's H2O, it's water. We have C and O coming together, that's carbon dioxide. We have Na, one element, H, another element, C, another element, O, another element, all coming together to make a compound called sodium bicarbonate. Now, we notice these little numbers here in the chemical formula. These are called subscripts. Now these subscripts are added to the chemical formulas or are added to the symbols indicating how many atoms there are of that element in this compound. So there are three oxygen atoms in this compound. If there is no subscript, it's understood to just be one. So I have one sodium, one hydrogen, one carbon, three oxygens in this entire compound. Now, one word you're going to hear thrown around a lot is the word molecule, or you're going to hear it as molecular. Now, a molecule is similar to a compound, but it's different. A molecule is when two or more atoms bond together. Notice, I just said two or more atoms. Usually, this is referring to atoms that are considered to be nonmetals. So and we'll talk about what a nonmetal is later on. But some examples are... H2, O2, CO2, H2O, C6, H6O6. These are all nonmetals, and it's more than one atom bonded together that categorizes it as a molecule. Now, these are all molecules, but not all of these are compounds. Can you figure out which ones? I'm pretty sure you can. Now, compounds are when different atoms combine together. Here I have carbon, hydrogen, oxygen. Those are pretty different. That is a compound. H and O, that's a compound. C and O, that's a compound. But here, I only have oxygens coming together. Those are the same atoms, same elements. Sorry, the same atoms. So, that is simply a molecule and not a compound. H2, a molecule, not a compound, because these are not different things coming together. They're the same thing coming together, or same type of atom coming together. H2 and O2 have specific names. They're called diatomic molecules. They're definitely molecules, just like the others, but they're in a different category, a specific category called diatomic. Di stands for two, atomic stands for atoms, so molecules composed of two atoms. That's what diatomic means. These are when two of the same atoms bond together. There are seven common diatomic molecules. Is Br2, I2, N2, Cl2, H2, O2, F2. Remember this 2 indicates that there are two atoms that make up this molecule. Two fluorine atoms specifically. 
A good way to remember that these are the seven common diatomic molecules is what I like to call, like to call Dr. Brinkelhoff. So I make it into a name. So think of Dr. Sohn Studia, chemist, and his last name is Brinkelhoff, B-R-I-N-C-L-H-O-F, Dr. Brinkelhoff. That's a good way to remember it. So please do. We saw our first um, diatomic molecules in class in our investigation. We did our, first, when you guys saw your first chemical reaction. It was on video, but it was the reaction that was the electrolysis of water. This is when water was decomposed. In the video, we saw that water, liquid water, had energy run through it in the form of electricity, and in the little tubes gathered hydrogen gas and oxygen gas. This is a chemical reaction that produced two diatomic molecules. Now, in chemistry, we like balance. Balance is phenomenal. It's, you know, sought out after. We love balance. But in this equation, we see some problems here. Well, I see some problems. I see I have two hydrogens before my reaction, regular water. But after my reaction, oh, I have two. Seems good. Seems balanced. But let's look at my oxygen. I have one oxygen here. There's no subscript here, so that means there's one. I have one oxygen, but over here I have two. How can I go from having one thing to having two things. Things can't randomly appear out of thin air. That's not possible. So there's a law that we have to abide by. And that law is called the law of the conservation of matter. This is very similar to the law of conservation of energy that you might have learned in physics, or the law of conservation of momentum that you might have learned in physics. And it states that matter cannot be created or destroyed, only transformed. So matter can't be created. So I can't just create another oxygen on this side if I didn't have it on this side. So in order to obey this law, we must do something called balancing the equation. So we must balance this chemical equation. We do so by just altering this equation. Now, we're going to do a lot of practice of this later on, but this is just an introduction to balancing. In order to balance this equation, I would need to make another option over here. But I can't change this here. I have to just put a number here. So I put a 2 here. That means I have two oxygens to match my two oxygens over there. And, but this 2 means 2 times my 2, so that's 4 hydrogens. But I have 2 there, so I put a 2 here to balance. If that confused you, I understand. It's your first time seeing balancing. If not, go with it. But we will be doing more of this as the year continues. This is just an introduction. Please take note of that, and we'll talk more about that in class. Now, underneath or next to my chemical formulas, you see these little symbols here. These are my states of matter, of liquid. This liquid water is transforming to gaseous H2 and gaseous O2. Now, I must also obey this law of conservation of matter in the second chemical reaction that we saw. The second chemical reaction that we saw in class was that one that we used to explode the egg. In this reaction, we had solid zinc and it was in the bottle of your test tube. It reacted with hydrochloric acid. Now, hydrochloric acid is aqueous. Aqueous means that this acid is dissolved in water. That's what AQ means. It's dissolved in water. And that was mixed with the zinc. When that happened, we saw something happen in that test tube. We saw bubbling, and we saw something being produced. What was being produced was this <clears throat> gas, H2. This is, again, a diatomic molecule that was produced. We see a trend of the class. So this is a diatomic gas molecule produced in the reaction. We symbolize that it's a gas with this lowercase g here. Also in the test tube that was produced is this compound, zinc chloride. It is also aqueous, meaning this zinc chloride is a substance that is dissolved in water. Now notice, what I started with, is on the left side of the arrow. What I end with is on the right side of the arrow. This is known as a chemical equation. For every chemical reaction, we will have a chemical equation. This equation, again, must obey the law of the conservation of matter, so it must be balanced. So I have one zinc here, but I have one zinc there. Good. One hydrogen here, two hydrogens here. 
not so good. One chlorine here, two chlorines there. Again, not so good. I have to do something to balance this equation. I need another hydrogen and chlorine on this side. So I add a coefficient, we call it, here. And this means I have two hydrogens, two chlorines to match the two hydrogens, and two chlorines on this side. That's balancing chemical equations. This is section one of chapter one. Gentlemen, take notes. Adios.